Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome back to IAD Corner episode four. So this week, or uh, this time, we're gonna talk about the happy learning, successful tips from international student perspectives. And you're here with me, Miss Prao Sen, who sing her or Pifa and Ajahn Hendrik, IAD staff. Good afternoon. Yes, and you know, today we're so lucky that we have several students joining us, including a Thai student, mm. Chinese student, and yes, we're still waiting for American student, right? Yeah. yeah, but um, before we actually start, maybe Ajahn Hendrik have some word to say, or you can share some idea about the happy learning tips. Actually, it's uh, the, the way we learn. We are going to talk today about uh, learning uh, and how can you learn in uh, an efficient way and how can you learn in and also have fun in the process. So in order to, uh, I made a small presentation that I would like to show first. So okay. Let's yeah. Have a look. yeah, Alfonso, could you please share for yes. us? <laughs> I will play the, the slide. One, two, three. Hi all, my name is Ajahn Hendrik. Welcome to the IAD Corner. Today I want to talk about learning. What is learning? What are the benefits of learning? And what are techniques for learning? Learning is the process of acquiring, understanding and retaining skills or knowledge on long term. The process of learning never stops. After finishing your university education, you continue to learn new things every day in daily life and work. Benefits of learning include intellectual benefits. Learning stimulates curiosity and imagination, boosts your mental energy and allows you to gain knowledge and skills. Social benefits. By learning, you stay up to date, create opportunities, increase your income and your status. Benefits for society, to achieve its goals, develop understanding and form moral and behavioral values. Personal development, learning boosts your self-confidence and enhances your leadership qualities. It helps you achieve your personal goals. All in all, learning improves your personal happiness. A few techniques that will help you to learn efficiently and have fun in the process. First of all, take breaks. After a few hours study, go do something else to take your mind off. Test yourself regularly to see if you really understood the things that you just learned. Work out problems related to the learning topics or put away your books and ask yourself critical questions. Keep yourself motivated. I can rather than I can't. Take sufficient rest. Often you will learn more during the first hour in the morning than during the last three hours in the evening because you're tired. Remove stress. When you start learning, make sure there are no other things on your mind. Eat and drink things that are good for physical and mental health. Food rather than candy. Sweet things are bad for your concentration. Create a proper setting that allows you to focus on your study, such as your study desk. Have a comfortable place to learn. Turn off music and news. Turn off your cell phone. Have sufficient light and space. Study with others. Two people know more than one. Don't deceive yourself into thinking that you already know everything. Be critical towards yourself. Determine what information is important and forget about the rest. Try various methods. Some people learn best when they see things, others when they listen to things, and others again when they read things and make notes for themselves. Choose the method that works best for you. Eliminate distractions. Seek a quiet environment. Make sure that you sit comfortably. Learning techniques are personal. There is no good method above another. Choose the techniques that work best for you. That was it. Now is the time 
to answer the question and answer session in this IAD corner. I wish you happy learning. Bye for now. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you sure. for a nice video, Ajahn Henrik. It was a short introduction about learning. I think most of you will know what learning uh, is, and most of you will also know uh, why learning is important. You are all learning at this very moment. Uh, but sometimes it is uh, nice to uh, just stand still and reflect a moment uh, on this. For the uh, rest of the afternoon, we have a few uh, questions and discussions. Um, we, we also would like uh, you to answer a few things uh, about how you learn, mm -hmm. how you learn efficiently, uh, what problems you uh, uh, face while learning and how you solve that. So yeah, maybe we, we can start mm -hmm. now. Yep. All right. So um, uh, please introduce yourself again, uh, Ms. Min and Mr. Metawarate. Maybe start from Ms. Min. Hey, um, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ming. I'm I am uh, Ming. Uh, I come from China and uh, uh, I have lived in Europe like uh, six years. Uh, first years I finished my master degree in Spain and then I went to Germany to work and learn German for three years. And now I'm studying in development science in Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences as a PhD student, um, a lot of people ask me why, uh, why you changed the countries to live and why you went to Europe and then changed again to Thailand. Well, um, I think the key word is uh, change. Uh, I always want to change the life and would like to find different things and experience. Uh, and the other reason is that my major before PhD is urban tourism. Uh, I need to observe and experience the different destinations, culture or policy to do my research. So uh, when I got out uh, and opened the world map, I found a wonderful and new country for me. Uh, it's Thailand. Uh, I thought maybe it's an um, interesting place to explore. So I searched the top 10 university in website and found KKU. Mm -hmm. uh, then I opened all the websites about uh, uh, KKU and applications, uh, including Facebook and Twitter to get information and found the email of professors to connect them to discuss the topic which I want to research and connect with staffs of uh, graduate school, then I decide to, decided to come here. Yeah, that's all. Oh, wow, hey. that is a very interesting uh, yeah. curriculum, I think. Been to Europe, been to uh, Thailand. Uh, question, by the way, do you speak German now? <laughs> yes, for, for surviving, yes. <laughs> for, okay, you can survive in Germany. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you speak Thai at the moment or not yeah. yet? No, for surviving too. <laughs> okay, okay, good luck. Good luck with that. Okay, that's Thank good to know from yeah. her. Maybe move to Mr. Metavaratev. Can you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Metavaratev Tongtap. So you can call me Oven because my name is quite long. <laughs> I am a, okay, I'm a, Oven. <laughs> I'm a currently fifth year pharmacy student at Konkan University. And now I'm interested in the field of uh, clinical pharmacy, mm. yeah. and uh, about my background, by the way, I, ha I have never been abroad, <laughs> and my hometown is Sisigate, it's located in the northern of Thailand, same as Khon yeah. uh, back to my high school, Khon Kaen University is to, is like popular there, <laughs> so I, I decided to be here because of the um, reputation, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> and because of the reputation is not too far from home, and the quality of education facilities mm -hmm. and environment of the in the campus. So yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Nice to meet you and good to know that both of you love KKU and you know the thing that KKU is very reputed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's move to the next question. Right. Okay. Miss Min and Owen. Yeah. As you just explained that you are interested, I think so much in learning. Then you can prove that you go to study at PhD level, or maybe Owen will continue. But I would like to ask you a little bit, uh, let's say deeper, that what makes you happy when you study? Do you feel that way? I mean, do you see learning make you happy, or it's burdening? Share with us. Start from me. Okay, okay, that's question maybe five or six years ago when I was an undergraduate student, uh, getting good notes really would, me, would, would make me happy. But now I think it's dif different, not for me still matters, uh, but uh, not as much. I mean, like uh, when I'm thinking about the problem, maybe it's a social problem or I need to prepare a mind map for a long time and cannot solve it. But suddenly I could solve my confusion through reading or my teacher helped me to understand it. For me, it's a new knowledge and I found out a new way to think, to thinking. Uh, it, made, it will make me happy. And also, I'm happy when I'm listening to others' opinions and gain new insights. Uh, that makes me happy now. Yes. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Owen. Because, yes, because maybe okay. now the note is not so important for me because I don't need the good GPA to apply for a higher degree, you know. So... Yeah, so the process for me is more important now. That's good. Sounds lovely. And Owen, what is your idea? Uh, what makes me uh, happy when I study, right? Uh, yes. The first thing is progression uh, for me. Uh, let me explain about why progression makes me happy. First of all, I need to like set my goal of studies first. Without goal, studying would be so hard for me because I will not be like motivated. Uh, when facing something difficult, I might give up easily, and it might cause stress or depression. On the other hand, I if I set my goal clearly, every step of my development or progression will be one step closer to my goal. That's why it makes me happy. Mm. And. I just enjoy free time a lot, <laughs> doing what, what, my hobby. Uh, what do you mean by goal? Do you set up that I have to get very high score or what? Uh, maybe it's like basic, like I I need to understand this thing. Okay. Like this. I got and it. I, and, and one more thing, I love making myself proud. <laughs> <laughs> You're I will passionate. be proud if I make something like breakthrough, outstanding, or uh, I can be a person who can, who someone can rely on me. I just want to ensure that I'm still a useful person in your study. <laughs> and I don't know why it makes me happy. Uh, outstanding, Mark. Mark. Mm. <laughs> I see that we have a few uh, more participants. I see Madeline, I see Nita, and I see Badri. Uh, can you shortly um, introduce yourselves, maybe? Let's start with Madeline. Do you have a camera, Madeline? Hi, Madeline. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Um, Can you introduce yourself to your friends? Um, I am from China, and mm -hmm. my major is Thai. So, <laughs> but... But, but my English is not very good. I uh, want to um uh and uh, now I'm in China, but maybe in November I will go to Thailand. Mm. 
Okay. Okay. Feel feel free to stay online, Madeline. If um, maybe you if you don't understand everything, but never mind about that. Maybe you pick up some things, and if you would come to Konken in November, that would be nice. Yeah. It? <laughs> so you're welcome to stay online. We'd like to uh, have your participation as well. Then yeah. I see Nita Sari. Nita. Nita, are you there? Sawadika Nita. Can you say hi to your friends? I got why this. Hello everyone. My name is Nita Sari Suryani. So you can call me Nita. I am from Indonesia and I'm studying in civil engineering department in Faculty of Engineering. Engineering. Yeah. In second semester. Nice to meet you. Okay. I, are you in Konken or in Indonesia? I'm in Konken right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was, wasn't sure, but I saw Madeline was in uh, China, so... so Adita just is in KKU. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last person, Badri. Badri? Uh, Hi. Yes. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I'm sorry because I'm in the KKU library now. <laughs> <laughs> So you at KKU now? Yes. Ah, okay. Nice to meet you again. And luckily now we have Mr. Sarge. Zach Zachary. Hi. <laughs> Could you please um turn on your mic? Thank you. How's it going? Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Uh, this okay, Zachary. Good great. afternoon. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself to your friends again? Okay, so my name is Zachary Green. I'm an American, I'm not an exchange student, as many think I am. I'm actually enrolled here in an international program for public health. Uh, mm -hmm. and for, for how many years? Oh, just a two year master's program. Two years master's, okay, okay. And I like it here, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You you were not there yet, Zachary, when we started. Uh, the, one of the first questions uh, we had uh, to some other students is, how do you how do you learn? How do you learn in, in a way that makes you happy? How do you learn uh, in an efficient way? Um, maybe how do you do you have obstacles while learning? How do you overcome them? Um, I would be very interested to hear uh, from an American student. <laughs> Uh, the reaction about that. So if you can give us your thoughts, how how do you experience and do happy learning? Yeah. So for me personally, I've come to recognize that there are many ways to learn. There are many ways to get the information. And when I don't quite understand it the first time, I would always either, always YouTube. YouTube is definitely one of the first resources I always go to. And I always try to see if there are any other forms of the content that are available to me that could better help me understand the subject or course at hand. Such as online, for instance, or books or, or... So for me, especially during undergrad, mathematics, when I took calculus myself, sometimes I didn't quite understand everything my professor was telling me, but I would find resources in like Khan Academy on YouTube or just other websites as a whole. And one of my favorite resources was definitely Chegg. Chegg really showed me how to really process and really understand what I was learning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's how good to know that from you. Yeah. And maybe Ajahn Hendrik, right? Oh, Akum. Oh, Ajahn Hendrik. Oh, Ajahn Hendrik, you can move to the next question, number three. Um, <clears throat> there may be... Um... Maybe let, let me start asking all the other participants in the in this IED corner. Uh, is everything sufficiently understood? Uh, you are freezing, sir. Uh, still freezing. Okay, could you repeat, repeat the question, please? Um, can everybody follow what we say? Do we speak too fast? Should we speak slower? Or uh, should we speak more clear? Or uh, just asking. If we speak too fast and you miss a lot of the details, that would be a pity. So my question is, uh, does everybody understand um, 
the discussions? If if not, raise your hand. Type one in the check box below. Yes. Okay. I think everyone. Yes. Okay, Kaja Henrik. <laughs> okay. Um, just a playful question. There is a preconception. Um, if you are smart, you must be good at mathematics. Do you maybe, agree? Maybe I should not ask Zach, or, <laughs> or I should ask Zach this question. But what do you think? Uh, if you are smart, then you must be good at mathematics, or you can also be smart without being good at mathematics. Um, it's me like if you... Oh, Owen, yeah. Hmm? It's like... It's like it's not just the mathematics, but it's like okay, it's considered that you are smart if you're good at math or you're good at just English. Mm -hmm. So, do you agree with this idea? Maybe start from Thai student Owen. Okay, um, personally, I, I I agree and also disagree. Uh, if you're a smart student, must be good at mathematics, because uh. Some student who's good at mathematics is smart, but smart student doesn't have to be good at mathematics. Mathematics for me is just a subject that which is, okay, it's challenging, it's skillful, but is this not the only thing that defines someone smart? Okay. Okay. What Sashri. about Sashri? Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always viewed that there are many forms of intelligence and mathematics is not the end all be all. I've met many smart people that have not been the smartest at math, but I think there are ways to get around just a base knowledge of a certain subject. I'm for one, I wouldn't say I'm the best at mathematics, but because of my social skills and charisma, I'm able to meet people that are good at mathematics and they can, help me understand the subject, which I think really helps really emphasize a different form of intelligence. Mm -mm. But not all smart people can be good at math. I think there's uh, admirable traits. I like your remark. You say there's a lot of uh, different kind of uh, intelligence. You mm -hmm. can be intelligent in one subject and not be very intelligent in another. Right. Uh, that is extremely well true. <laughs> so... Thank you for that, uh, Zach. What about Min, please? Yes, yes, I totally agree with uh, Owen and uh, and Seth. Yes, um, of course, mathematics is very important of our life for our studies. Uh, for me, it's a kind of useful tool. Uh, if we good at uh, uh, good at uh, using that tool, we can solve a lot of problems easier. But uh, I'm not sure what is the concept of smart student. What I mean, what is smart? Uh, if uh, we can find a lot, uh, lot of ways to to solve the problems of uh, of problems like uh, not only mathematics as uh, as well as like uh, technology use uh, computers calculators. So I think I'm not totally agree that if you are a smart student, uh, you must be good at mathematics. The most thing, the most important thing is that you need to find a way to solve your problems. Uh, but but anyway, and, uh, anyway, mathematics is uh, important, even though it's not a stand, standard line to measure how you how you smart are. I think yes. Okay. Okay. Absolutely logic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the answer. Insightful, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, if not mathematics, what is your favorite subject? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask this question? So, what subject or what uh, topic that you like the most? You make like you make, you feel mm, I'm in power with this. Uh, Sajali. Wow. If we were to, if that question, if I were to reiterate the question is, what was my favorite class in undergrad? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have to say this drug biology class I took in undergrad. So in undergrad, I was a chemistry student mm. and we had this drug bio course where we really went in depth into a lot of variety of 
things that were found recreationally, things that were found pharmaceutically and how they affected the brain and things of that nature, which was really relevant because currently in the United States, we have an opioid academic, epidemic. So there are many people that are suffering and abusing and are suffering with things such as addiction. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to learn how many of these substances affected the brain. And it was just a really lovely class. Definitely so much fun. That is Not a little bit under the analysis. surface, right? You, you don't hear a lot about that on the news. Um, are these drugs prescribed um, uh, legally, of course? Mm -hmm. So um, yes, but are these prescribed uh, because of uh, depressions or because of insomnia? People cannot mm -hmm. sleep, or for what reason are they prescribed, and why do people get addicted to those drugs? So uh, the big problem in the United States is it really is tied with our healthcare system at mm -hmm. the same time, because it's such a for-profit industry. Um, they're really so basically doctors get a commission of the sales of narcotics so the more they prescribe they also get paid on the back end from the pharmaceutical company yeah. currently they're working on stopping such things but what would happen in the united states was if you say you were working construction and you broke your foot unfortunately they would prescribe you for 10 months of like okay here's a six month prescription even though you'll be healthy in two months so a person is constantly taking the, this medication and getting their prescription refilled because it has such a big window. And so dependence and addiction has arisen because of that circumstance. That's a small example, but because of such things, people then look for alternatives to really feel their need once they are not allowed to have that prescription mm -hmm. because you may not be able to renew the prescription, but you still have that addiction and dependence on the substance. And that's when people start looking for more of the black market substances found in the markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real social problem. It's so after this class, I would say addiction is not a social disease. It is truly a disease because there's actually a biological change, which really had me change the way I viewed the problem in America. Okay. Um, that is a very uh, clear, well-defined uh, subject that you are interested in, Zach. Uh, Min, do you have a subject like that that you say, this This is what really interests me? Yeah, for me, in my process, it's like uh, interesting me is uh, uh, methodology. Actually, it's a kind of uh, subject of um, philosophy. It, uh, actually, it uh, confused me a lot because we always want to uh, we, we always have to discuss what is real reality. So uh, that con confused me a lot, but uh, it's very interesting because uh, in, the, in this subject, uh, it will give me a new, new view to see the new world. Uh, that uh, reminded me to observe, the, to observe every phenomenon and give me uh, some ways to explain it. That's uh, interesting. And, and of course, that uh, subject needs me to combine like other subjects like mathematics and the skills of reading and, uh, and a lot. Yes, that's interesting for me. Thank you. OK. Um, what about Owen? Yeah. Do you like the same subject, same as such? <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you are a pharmacist. <laughs> as I mentioned before, that's interesting because in Thailand, drug abuse is very big issue here, right? In, in what way? <laughs> it's like it's like grower, grower, and many more will um, many more naive of the drug drug abuse user is mm -hmm. increasing right now especially in the rural area so you, you mean things like uh, like yaba that, that sort of thing yes yes yes, yes. yeah uh, so, for, i for those I who do not understand area. i think that is a uh, uh, meth or something like that okay uh, back back to back to our <laughs> back to our uh back to our question uh my favorite subject is pharmacology i Studying pharmacy 
before I study in pharmacy, I always wondering how painkiller drug know where the pain is located and how long it will get rid of the pain uh, after I take that pill. So the subject explained everything I was curious before. Mm. Okay, I see. Thanks for the answer. What about the next question, Anson Henry? Number five. Um, the, the question is, uh, what happy learning tips would you like to recommend to your friends? Uh, you, you can see this in many ways. Um, maybe sometimes you are not always motivated or you have a down day you, you, um, or you, ha you have obstacles in learning. You try to learn, but one way or the other, you don't acquire the knowledge. What tips would you have for your fellow students on happy learning, on how to learn? And I think we could, um, we still haven't heard from uh, Obadri, yes, we've heard, right? Yeah, maybe you can ask this participant. Badri, are you there? Yes. Okay. Okay, maybe. I, I, can't, I can't see you, but uh, anyway, you can, you can answer. If you unmute your microphone. What tips do you have for happy learning? Uh, I'm not sure at my answer, but I think it's a work life balance, I think. Work life balance, something? Yes. Yes. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Yes, yes we okay. can hear you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, it work life uh, balance. Study and life is balance, and and we, we if we put like four hours of study in one day, we should have four hours too for enjoy our lives like that. Okay, so you, you enjoy learning, you keep enjoying learning by uh, mixing it with other things. Yes. Like, okay. Okay, thank you. What about Oven? <laughs> yeah, um, let me think. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what is my happy learning tips? Um, I prioritize my mental health first. If you feel like you're uh, stressed or it's like everything is fail. You think like uh, you can do it better or everything is not like supposed to be and you are tired. You need to pause because you take, take a rest. If you persist that, it will be like you drive a broken car, it will get worse. So you must fix it before you drive. Mm -hmm. take, take a rest, then continue. <laughs> So it's not only just one thing, it's a combination of a lot of factors, sometimes even at the same time. You have a lousy day, your car is broken down and, and, and things like that. You still have to learn because you still have to get the points for your exam, right? So yeah, um, motivation is important. Maybe that's one, uh, one thing I would like to ask also, how about what is your motivation to study? Like, like Min already answered, it's, it's partly uh, the, the seek for challenge that's uh, wanting to know things. Uh, do you study for yourself? Do you study to contribute to society? Do you study to make your parents proud? Do you study to get a high position and a high salary? That's a lot of motivations that you can have. Um, Zach, what, what is your prime motivation for studying? <laughs> Personally, yeah, what, 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 what makes you think? What makes you study? Why, what is, <laughs> makes you enthusiastic for studying? I really just like being a student, to be quite honest. So, you like what? So after I graduated in May 2020 during the pandemic, I worked for one year. And something about the nine to five made me realize, hmm, I think I want to go back to school for a little bit. Hmm. There's just something that's really special about university living something about, it's just an amazing time and I definitely wanted to revisit it. 
then I, I think I do it more for the social reasons. And I personally have put myself in a situation where something will come out of it at the end of it. Mm. But for me, it doesn't, I've come to learn that in the States, if you just have a master's degree, regardless of what it's in, it gives you that title of elevation. So mm. as a result, I just knew I just wanted to come back to school. I love it here. It's fun. Okay. It's like you love <laughs> so, learning. <laughs> you love learning. So after the master's, you still have uh, possibilities to continue learning. I think so. I think I'm a man of education. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what about... Excellent, bro. Excellent, bro. Yeah. Nice to hear that he's love learning. <laughs> okay. What about um, Min? Right? Yes, yes. It's about uh, happy learning tips or my motivation. <laughs> Maybe you both can share. You, you, I, I guess you probably have something to say about both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I first uh, of all, I, I want to share about my happy learning tips because, uh, you know, uh, we are students, so we are mean, mean task to study of course but uh, when we feel stressed uh, i think we need to go outside and mm. enjoy the food enjoy the natural enjoying to talking talk talk with our friends because you know thai food is amazing for me sometimes we can see a uh, dishes is it's like a green and it's like a, a white soap but it's spicy so everything su su surprised me and uh, about the natural, we, we need to uh, enjoy the temperature of Thailand, maybe because be before I leave the place, it's so cold. And uh, talking with our friends to learn like uh, some language, like uh, I always talking with my friend and drink something and like mokiao is like that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so it's very interesting and will relax uh, relax our stress. I think is a good uh, way to to relax. And the second is to to be opti uh, optimistic mm. uh, that uh, you can find you you can maybe you will face a lot of problems, but if you take it as a challenge and then you solve it. You will feel happy actually. So, um, if you cannot uh, find a solution, please, uh, please ask for help. Uh, maybe ask for help uh, of your teachers, of your friends. Everything you can do. So, um, life is always like that. It's struggle, but you need to op uh, optimistic to face it. That's my tips. And uh, about my motivation is about, um, I just want to change my life and get a degree and uh, find the new things of my life because life, you need to, you need to find, find some different things or, or it's just like uh, that, that water is not good for me, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you already know what you want to do after you graduate? Yes, I, I want to, uh, uh, after my graduate, I want to be a Achan in university. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, to to show what I learned before about the social science. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Actually, I think the idea that those three students share with us is quite same as my working. Also, actually. Mm -hmm. The tips is the same. It's like, okay, when I feel stressed, I have to rest. I have to rela release the stress mm. and find some new balance. And like Min says that when I see the problem, I try to make it like challenging. And that's make me feel like improve myself. If I feel I really cannot handle it, then I just go to ask my colleague. And, you know, it's the same as um, your setting. Yeah, that's good to know the idea from three of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Akung, next please. <laughs> All right, uh, very nice conversation. And I like to go deeper and deeper. <laughs> As I consider learning, uh, considering learning as the activity 
for example, reading a book or do the discussion or doing homework, right? We define them as the learning. And could you share with us uh, how do you manage your learning time and leisure time? Sometimes we need, we love to listen to your voice though, right? Although we know exactly ourselves, but we love to hear. Zegri, how do you manage your time? Well, something that I'm trying differently this go around in my career of education is I'm definitely prioritizing more of the health. So going to the gym, I like to go at least five, six days a week. That's a big one. And it's made me realize how important it is to take care of one's body. So once I take care of that, it seems to me that everything else falls into place a little easier and I'm able to prioritize my health and then I'd say my education, because without your health, there's no point to all the education. And so that's been a big one that's really helps me be able to prioritize what I need to do during the day. As long as I can get that time in the gym in, or at least a walk outside, then everything else seems to fall naturally. And it, the really nice thing is, is there's always a moment of clarity, which really brings back to, goes back to education where I can really think, I'm like, whoa, maybe I need to focus on this more. Maybe I can improve on this more. And it all really comes from just taking care of the wellness aspect of it. Uh, I see that. So it, 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 it means that you block the time. I mean, you make the very specific schedule that, okay, this is 5 a.m. that I have to study <laughs> or not. Exactly. That's exactly such because everything else can move as long as I take care of my studies mm. and of my body and Every, everything else can shift or maybe do a little longer, maybe do, do a little less. But as long as I take care of the two priorities in my life, I think everything else can fall into place. Set off the main priority mm -hmm. first. I see. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, uh, oh, Owen, Owen. Uh, do you have something similar? Do you have the number one and two priority in your life and everything else is secondary? Um, I, I always list what I am going to do in, in a day. Mm -hmm. And I always ask myself what I'm going to do today. Or, and, and the most important thing that I have, I must uh, include my free time in my to-do list also. So I write it here every day, what, I, what I'm going to do in a day. And, but, uh, but I don't strict in my plan too much. I think I'm a flexible person, maybe. Okay. okay. What about Min, Miss Min? Yes, actually, uh, I'm like uh, open to always. I have a, like a list, uh, this kind of list, and just uh, consider about yes, because about what are what are we going to do today? But to be honest, um. Until now, I'm not a perfect manager of uh, of my time. Uh, there are there have there are a lot of uh, times that I have already have uh, uh, made a lunch uh, appointment with my friends, but the teacher, you know, Ajahn sometimes changes the class time because of his uh, meeting. So I have to cancel cancel the appointments so with my friends and uh, also like the last activity like English camp I registered but uh, my, my teacher changed her class to the same day so I had to join the a part of activity and then found a place to to, to sit and join the zoom to take class that sometimes got me in a bit of rush so uh, I think it, it's not all my fault because, you know, the time of everyone is uh, flexible. So I need to balance it, which is, most imp which is more important, the activity or this class. So sometimes I need to manage it better. Okay, uh, and um, talk about the study time and, and the leisure time for me uh, during the day. They are half and half. I always use a, you know, the calendar 
to know the goals today and tomorrow and usually uh, after one hour of reading time, I would like to take a rest and thinking about uh, I think about lunch or dinner, what, what I'm going to eat and just relaxed. Yeah, just like that. And, and how, how you said that, uh, yeah, you have the very tight schedule and how do you stay committed with the time? Commit, I mean, yeah. commit, yeah. Yes. Uh, or you just let it flow that, okay, it's time to study, to do the work or? Yes, actually for me, um, the course is uh, always more important than an um, activity. So uh, sometimes I have already uh, have a, an appointment of this activity like tomorrow, actually we have culture camp, right? But the, if the Ajahn change the time to tomorrow I, and I cannot miss the meeting. So I have to consult the, activity. So that made me very, very sad, actually, and sorry for all the stuff. So, you know, the, uh, so I have to say sorry. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, I think the, sometimes I need to talk with my Ajahn to, to manage his time also. <laughs> yes, it's like that. Okay. All right, so next I would like to ask uh, Ms. Min and Mr. Sesh that what is the differences between your classroom and Thai classroom environment? For example, the you know, Thai student, you ask the questions after the Ajahn finished the lecture class. So maybe you can share with us maybe one or two issues that what is the different you know, environment between your uh, classroom setting and in Thai classroom setting, maybe start from uh, Miss Min. Uh, yes, I'm sorry because I don't, until now, I don't know the Thai class environment. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a, I'm in a small group. I just uh, wow. yeah have two classmates. One is Thai people, and another comes from Cambodia. <laughs> so we don't okay. have. Okay, yes. maybe like maybe move to. Can I ask Seth? Can you share this to your friend? <clears throat> yes, I'd love to share. Yeah. So I've noticed quite a bit of differences from mm. the American way of teaching and the Thai way of teaching. So. Back when I was an undergrad, I went to a very large institution. And so a lot of my classes were about 250 people mm. uh, per class. So it was very large. And I, I learned that class discussions were a, big, a bigger part of the lectures rather than simply reading off the PowerPoint slides. Mm. And the reason is I felt was very interesting in Thailand is because they give us the slides at the end of class anyway. So I always figured it was more important to ask questions during the lecture to discuss mm -hmm. points rather than just read off the slides and memorize them. Because for me, education doesn't mean too much if it's not applicable to your world, your community. And for me, I've noticed that to sit for the whole three hour lecture and then ask questions at the end versus asking when you wanted to know, because that was probably the best time to ask in my opinion. But those are some very notable differences, waiting for questions at the end, um, not truly having that classroom discussion. And the third thing that I've noticed is, it seems whatever the Ajahn says is law, even, and if you disagree, it's, it's a little bit of rude. And I felt I've come into contact with that a couple of times out here. I definitely collide a little bit more with uh, here in Thailand. Yeah, yes, exactly. So for example, recently we had a class about dentistry and they were talking about how fluoride isn't very good for your teeth, but I was confused because right before I've had fluoride attached to my teeth the last six months for the last 23 years of my life. <laughs> so it was interesting to have that little discussion of saying, but at the end of the day, we came to the realization that fluoride isn't truly a priority when it comes to dental care. 
in Southeast Asia as it is viewed as a leisurely, like a like add on in the United States. So it was very interesting to see the priorities, and those are those are the benefits I get from discussion. Is really truly understand where the Asians coming from and the cultural differences versus versus never asking the question at all. But I think there's value from my American way of being a student, of having those discussions, having those talks of reference and asking questions throughout a lecture. Mm. I see. So mm -hmm. it's like in the US, they give the very, very important about the discussion. Even though, you know, uh, when I study in university, you know, it's like, okay, I have to wait Ajahn to finish the slide and the student is like sitting quiet cannot say anything yeah it's, it's like that it's yeah. like that it's like that. but when i when i see my american friend joining class it's like they feel very active to you know mm. ask the question on that time so this is the difference between the thai and american yeah Good it's, to a, know. it's a cultural thing I, <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i think in thailand as, as a rule you do not challenge the teacher uh, as a cultural rule i think you do not challenge anybody who is senior to you Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a teacher or somebody who is older than you. Um, you do not challenge that. And I think in Western culture, it is much more common uh, to challenge. If a teacher says something, then a student says all the right. Teacher, I don't believe you. Why do you say that? Do you have some uh, evidence to support it? That is a question that in Thailand you would never no, never ask you, you could not no. ask in western culture you can ask and yeah. it, it also challenges the teacher to be to be sharp to say yeah. only the things that he can support so that mm. is really uh, i recognize what you say zach from yeah. my perspective uh, being a westerner in in thailand as well yeah mm. okay mean you have something yeah. to say yeah, so before the uh, Ajahn said, I, I, I uh, remember that my Ajahn in the class, uh, my class told, uh, my, my Ajahn told me that don't believe all you read. Mm -hmm. It's the first one. And the, the second one is, uh, mm, my teacher said, I'm a student too. So you need to talk with your, uh, talk your opinion and we can discuss it. Yes, there's a, this is a class of, of, of mine in Thailand. Actually, mm -hmm. I am so lucky to have a good, good teacher, actually. So I just want to say that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it's different. Okay, so maybe the next is about learning style, Akum. Okay, so we get deeper and deeper <laughs> where are we now <laughs> all right uh, sometimes uh, as we have many definition of learning itself but i think it's important to to know the style that yeah you are you think that you are proper in this style and so what what is your type of learning that can you share with us Maybe you have new style or unique style. Owen, is there any new style or unique style or different style? Yes, of course. <laughs> my my learning style is kind of when I study, I like to listen to teachers and sum up by my own short note. Then I read my own summarized note along with the teacher handouts. Sometimes I record teacher's voice in class without any permission <laughs> and listen without any permission and listen to, to those record or repeat. It helped me understand textbook and teacher's handout more. And sometimes learning by doing is works for me because pharmacy has a lot of lab class. So learning by doing is necessary. So my style is reading, auditory, and kinesthetic. Mm. Okay. Mix. <laughs> okay, yeah. what about Min? What is your learning style? Yes, yeah, actually we all mixed, I think. <laughs> but uh, mainly I, I'm a visual 
because uh, when I um, when I listen to class, I always like to have a note and uh, actually to draw a paint to connect to all these set. It's like uh, like uh, like that when I read or I'm sorry, it's okay. It, mm. I always want to draw a, a mind ah. mind. So I think it's a uh, it's useful for me to to connect all the uh, concept concept and uh, uh, continue my study. Yes, this my this my style. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. And Cesare. Um, for me, I've come to learn to have more patience for myself. If I don't immediately understand an assignment or understand how to work through something, I take a step back, I take a deep breath, and I go at it from the beginning. It may be, it may be longer than some of my other peers, but I'm prioritizing my own education and my own understanding. And one thing that's really helped me with that are concept maps and having a whiteboard. So if there's something I don't quite understand, I just write everything I do understand on this whiteboard. And if that helps a little bit, erase or add a little bit more. But that's really been a big thing that's helped me understand a lot of concepts. Because how do you know what you don't understand until you know what you do understand? Mm -hmm. So that's that's really where I approach my um, my newfound learning experience. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's good to know that everyone has like the mix style. But anyway, I think that the style that you choose is fit to your own way. Yeah. It's it's personal. This the the learning style is personal. Mm -hmm. Maybe a small anecdote. I when when I was studying, I studied physics. Uh, it was in the time when you didn't have iPhones and iPads and all those all those things. So mm. you had to study uh, by yourself. You didn't have an electronic library. If you want to read a book, you, you had to hop on your bicycle <laughs> and go to the university library to get uh, a particular book. Uh, that's so the, very long time ago. It's a long <laughs> time ago. It's a long time ago. Uh, yeah. But, um, if I did not understand something, I locked myself up in my room. It could be even for two weeks or three weeks until I understood. Uh, if there were colleges from the professor in physics, uh, I tried to read the books, the, the, the theory before the college, because I found out if I waited until college for the professor to talk about the, the, the theory, I didn't understand what he said. So I wanted to be better prepared. So I already learned uh, from the books that uh, the professor prescribed uh, before I went to the college. So those were a few uh, things the way yeah. we learned in my old <laughs> days. Yeah, uh, long time so ago. Very long, long time ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe we move to the last question. Mm -hmm. Mayha, yep. what type of teachers do you like the most? <laughs> yeah. Maybe Owen? What type of t-shirts do you like the most? Yeah, uh, type type of t-shirt. I love reasonable t-shirt. Mm. I love t-shirt who look at the student through their hearts, like who understand students in many many aspects of life, whether it, it is uh, physical or mental or spiritual. Okay. Do, do you have a specific example? It, it's it, it's, it's like when <laughs> when when my friends didn't show up to ask that what has really happened. Okay. How is her mind right now? Maybe. Uh, okay. So rather than being angry or rather than deducting uh, yes, points, yes. he said, "No, I'm interested. There must be a reason why she didn't come. What is mm -hmm. the reason that that's." Okay, that's good example. What about Miss hmm. Min? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. As I said earlier, uh, there is a Ajahn like uh, uh, told us, don't believe all you read, don't believe um, even though it's me. So I think I like the Ajahn like, uh, who likes to ask questions and uh, 
be willing to uh, listen to our uh, po opinions and then we discuss uh, we discuss together and uh, like an um, advisor who can who could give me suggestions on my studies and be willing mm -hmm. to listen my opinions and that kind of teacher is my is my favorite and I think maybe it depends on the major if your major is mathematics maybe the answer the, of this question will be changed. So mm -hmm. for my major, I like the uh, teacher like to talking and communicate. Talking, yes. communicate. So not, not teaching from an authoritarian point, like I am the teacher and you are the student, but the, the, the teacher, your ideal teacher, wants to interact and communicate and learn from you as well as uh, the way that students learn from him. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. What about you, Zach? Zach? I don't know how common it is, but I like a teacher that feeds me. Personally speaking, I have an agenda at the moment who will sometimes bring snacks to class. And it's like really nice because some days you just wake up late and don't eat your breakfast. And <laughs> here we go with Super Ajan with here's some fruits. I was thinking of you guys. We have a small mm -hmm. class of around 20 students or so. And we're all international. So we have like 15 Myanmar students, two Americans, and a lot of Thais. And the reason why I love that she feeds us is because it's really helping us understand Thai snacks and things of that nature. <laughs> I've never had half of these snacks in my existence. And here I am eating them so casually at 9 and 930 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And yesterday she got us pizza. She said, I'm sorry that we have class on a Sunday, but I just got you guys some pizza. Ah. So that's my favorite kind of a gun. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're like the teacher with the human touch. <laughs> of course. How could you not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Um, the good answer from our pew. Actually, we still have one more session about the game, but maybe we, we play some just maybe five or ten minutes before mm -hmm. ending the program. Is that okay with you? Yeah. yeah, because, you know, I feel very enjoyed to hear your opinion about the learning tips. Some some opinion is very new for me. Yeah. Mm. Akun, can you continue the last one, the game? <laughs> okay, you so... You need to turn your microphone on. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So this one we call... Yeah, classroom culture is will be like the similar that you that you ask you, but it will be some you know some new uh situation. We will provide you the situation classroom, and then we would like you to choose whether you want to choose A, B, or C, and why. Okay, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we will provide you the classroom culture situation, then you can choose the answer and maybe discuss with uh, your friends. Okay, what about the first question? Yeah. Okay, contact the lecturer. So what would you do if you want to meet your lecturer? A, you will send the message, email or call directly or B, you just directly come to see him or her. We, we answer through. Yeah, maybe you can type in on the chat. Okay. A, chat, B, chat A. A. And what about sex? A. Okay. Everybody Everyone. chooses A. Message or email. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm B. I'm B. It's easy and direct. B yeah. in the US. <laughs> yeah. But I used to not, you know, I used to not uh, send a message or mm make an appointment and once I make a Ajahn, then Ajahn stole me. So oh, that's no. why I, I listen, learn from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, please. Homework in group. What is your plan? Okay. A, you will take a lead. B, let the other make decisions. Okay. B. Minus B. 
A B depends on R. <laughs> what about open? A. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I feel curious. Open, why you choose A? <laughs> you always be the leader of the group? Not always, but I... I, I love to plan things. Ah. Okay, same as you said, that you say sometime you will be the leader. Of course. <laughs> well, I think I've always taken a strong role in delegation. Mm -hmm. So while well, being a delegator doesn't always mean you are the leader, because one, I feel like I have a good instinct to recognize who can be best for whatever the assignment can be. And mm. so I've always felt like I can always plan, okay, we're meeting here, here, uh, but I'm not the leader. Yeah. I'm just trying to organize when we as a collective can best do our job. Uh, I love the way you say organize. Mm -hmm. I also like to organize. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh. it's a kind of, uh, in, <clears throat> sorry, it's a kind of indirect leader. Yeah. Or, or a natural, uh, natural leader. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Next, please. Same as pizza. Okay, hot. Owen, motivate yourself. How do you motivate yourself? A, hold pep talk with myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remind talk. myself what I learned, what I learned to achieve. Okay, which one? Neither. Huh? <laughs> I take a shower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Mean. B, okay. Such is different answer. <laughs> it is. Maybe I can be, go back to my personal study. Um, I studied physics. I had the, 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 the not the last year, but the, the year before my last year, before I graduated, I had a, a long period, uh, more than six months, mm. that I was completely demotivated. Mm. Uh, and... I don't know why there was not, no particular reason, but um, I remember that I, keep, I kept telling myself, I am going through with my study because I want to get my graduation. I want to get my master's. Mm -hmm. There's no way I'm not going to uh, stop. So even though it was a lot of times difficult to wake up and difficult to motivate myself to study, um, but I said, I want to have this master's degree mm -hmm. at whatever cost. So that, that helped me through uh, that year. Mm -hmm. And the, the last year was uh, more easy uh, ah. because of that. So yeah, as long as you have a good motivator, um, you, you will succeed. Yes, correct. Okay. Next, please. So remember why I learned what I want to achieve. <laughs> Sorry. Remove stress. Okay. How do you leave your stress behind? A, B, C. A. Finish off all the responsibility. Okay. What about mean and open? A or sometimes C? Any file? Okay. A. Mm. That makes sense, A, because um, often stress is because when you are studying, there's still those things in the back of your mind. Oh, I haven't finished it. Oh, I still need to do that. Um, uh, and it keeps being in the back of your head mm. while you're studying. So you cannot concentrate on your study because you still have all those things to do and to remember. So if you finish those off and then you can study because your mind is free then because all the things you needed to do, you already have done. So yeah, agree. Next, please. Eat and drink smartly. What do you eat <laughs> or drink most of the time? Mm. Okay. Be, be honest. Be honest in answering this question. <laughs> At least be honest to yourself. B. B. Right, meat, fish, vegetable. Mm -hmm. 
B. Oh, everyone choose B. That's, that's, good. that's good. Yeah. But for me, that's, I will choose snack and candy. <laughs> I think for mo I think eighty percent is uh, is is regular food like rice and fish mm. and meat or maybe uh, vegetarian or something. But I I'm sometimes tempted when I'm working and I'm hungry. I say I'm, I'm not going to eat rice. I'm going I'm going to Seven Eleven buy a snack. But yeah, I know it's not good. <laughs> but we still but, doing. But we still do it every especially now, every now and then working yeah. yeah but what's what i said earlier is true um food is important for the way you study uh if you if you eat food that is not nutritious you eventually will have lack of concentration and you will have problems in uh, studying yeah so. right okay next please oh yeah <laughs> thank you well thank you all thank you Thank you all of you to joining us. I think we're at the end of the of the session now. Yes. Uh, I hope it was instructive. I hope it was fun to talk with some fellow students. Mm. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you again for the opportunity. It was really lovely to hear how yeah. other students are really handling. Okay. I, I can I return that compliment, Jack. Uh, for us as a team, it is always also uh, it is fun, it is instructive, it is nice to hear uh, from other people how they experience their study, their time at KKU, and so on and so mm -hmm. on. So, uh, for, uh, as much as it was fun and instructive for you, it is also fun and instructive uh, for us yes. as well. So, and on behalf of um, Kangen University and International Affairs Division, we want to say thank you so much for everyone for joining us and mm -hmm. give us some time to share. You know, actually, this topic is very interesting, but we might have the few participants to join because I think they just finished the midterm exam. But mm -hmm. anyway, that IAD corner will be arranged every month. So maybe next time that we arrange, you can invite your friends to join and it would be better if you can, you know, come as a speaker. You know, I feel very happy to let you be our speaker for the next episode. Absolutely. Mm. And if of course, if you have like any questions regarding to international matter, you can contact us at International Affairs Division and our staff will be really happy to help. Absolutely. And if there are any things that, that you are particularly interested in uh, regarding the study, then also let us know that we can make a topic out of that. But uh, right, before, before we leave, I want to, to hear one message mm -hmm. from everyone. What, what would we like to say with us? Anything? <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah, such. What, what would your goodbye words? <laughs> goodbye <Ali>? words. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye words. Last statement. Statement. Yeah. Uh, I know if I need help in physics, I know where to go. And if I okay. need help in pharmacy, I know where to go. <laughs> those, those are like the two things for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Owen, goodbye message. Um, thank you for the opportunity. It's an honor to be here with you all. And I, it's such a fun experience. I didn't have often international experience like this. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, good to know that. So come back to uh, come the back to me. Of, come uh, back to us. Fa. Yeah, you can In, keep contacting me. Yeah. And for next sessions, invite your friends, mm. international students, but also Thai students. It is just as uh, informative for Thai students to learn about international students as the other way around. So feel free to invite as many friends as you want, uh, Owen. Yeah. And Min and Jack and, and the other ones, Madeline. Yeah, Madeline too. Yeah. And Min, please give us some goodbye message. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you all to organize that activity. And uh, I'm very happy to hear about all your opinions. It's a kind of process of learning. And if I have any opportunity, I will call all my friends, all my classmates to join this uh, this activity. It's very interesting, really. Thank okay. you. Kapunka. Thank you. All right, good. Uh, Min, can you say goodbye in German to us? Uh, 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 auf Wiederholen. 
Auf Wiederhören. Auf Wiedersehen. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Okay. Actually, Sash, can you speak, I mean, another language, not just English? Yeah, I'm fluent in Spanish and French. Ah, okay. Yeah. But they're not, I mean, yeah, it's cool. My mom's from Mexico. Oh. So that's really nice. Can you say some goodbye in Spanish? Pues claro. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. And adios. Adios. And adios. Adios, of course. Ako yeah. in Bahasa. Okay, sampai jumpa. <laughs> no, oh, when in Thai. Goodbye in Thai. Lagon, Kap. Lagon. Okay, Ka. Lagon, Ka. So what do you Okay. Okay. Till next time. Till next time. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. I will leave now, huh? Okay. Thank you very much for your last episode. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, Madeline. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Madeline.